welcome to another Defemember day. It's day four and I am super excited for today's prompt. Can I just say tickets? This is a collaboration with Luise Heinzel and this is Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So we are working on the prompt list, which you can find linked below. Be sure to check out Louise's channel to see what she's doing for today's prompt as well. So today's prompt is gold or silver and ticket. What a fabulous combination again. So tickets, I think tickets are super, super fun. And there's so many ways you can use tickets and make tickets and all that good stuff. But first, the calendar. <laughs> it's day four. Oh, the window has a different shape. Maybe we get something different today. Yep. So these are Mawam. I'm not sure if you would have these in North America. Obviously, it's Coke flavored. And I will just show you what it looks like. It looks like a piece of gum, basically. But it's just like chewable candy. And obviously, it's going to have a flavor so I will keep that for a little later <laughs> maybe you're lucky like me and you already have a whole bunch of vintage tickets from somewhere so these are super fun I I love working with these they're great for collages and adding to bits of ephemera and all of that so super super fun but honestly I think it's even more fun to make your own now, I have experimented a little bit before this video because I had no idea how I was going to make, make mine because there's so many different ways of making them. So let me just show you what I've made so far and then I'll show you how I made them. So we have this kind. Actually, here there's two different kinds. So we have, well, they all have the same background. And then there's one type which looks like this. And there's one type that looks like this. Then we have these kind of tickets. They probably look the most traditional. Also super fun. And then there's this kind made with some scrap paper, which is ready for some more embellishing. So let's look at how to make these. And then the second step will, of course, be how can we use them? So let's start off looking at how I made these. Now these are super easy to make if you have some stamps that you can use to symbolize like a ticket. So maybe something like this. This one was from one of the Your Creative Studio boxes from, I guess, last year, 2020. Of course, there's this fabulous set from Tim Hall, Stampers Anonymous, the ticket booth. Here's the number in case you want to look that one up. That one is, of course, super fun. You have such a huge variety. And there's also a die set to go with these. So super fun. Or maybe you have something like this to actually make labels. But they would also make super fun tickets. Then here's something else. I think this one is from AliExpress. I was gifted this. So maybe if you look up ticket stamps, even something like this, I think would work. This is like a set with sentiments. And I think all of these would actually work as tickets. Or maybe you have something like this to actually make labels, but I think there would be great for tickets. Or here's another example. I've had this forever as well. These, of course, make fabulous tickets as well. So if you have anything like that, it's super easy to make something like this. So what I used here as a background is a cut off piece of a file folder. So I just cut a strip and I started stamping. Let me try this one here that says ticket using my jet black ink for this. And then I'll just keep stamping this in a line. If you want some ticket stamps, just search on Amazon or AliExpress or Etsy, whatever is your favorite marketplace, maybe eBay. 
to see if you can get some ticket stamps if you don't have anything that's suitable but it's really not necessary for what we're doing now next we want to have these perforated lines you know the ones that you have here on the tickets to actually tear them off like i have here now there's different ways you can do this one very quick way is if you are comfortable using a sewing machine you can just run a straight stitch through without a thread and you will have these i did not do that but that's one way another way is there are these metal wheels that have these pokey things and you can just roll that i don't know what those are called but what i did was i just used a pokey tool so any of these would do even a regular sewing needle would do and the bigger the better but even just the regular size would do and then i'm going to need something to put underneath now i have a piece of packaging you could even use a book or something and oh i forgot something before we poke the holes it's great if we score the lines where we're going to poke the holes one option is if you have a scoreboard and it's very simple you just put it in there and then you make your scores in between the tickets but do not worry if you don't have this i'll show you another option of course there's always going to be tools that make crafting life easier but in most cases there are also ways around it so if i wouldn't have this tool i would take a ruler place it in between the stamps and then fold this up and then take some kind of a tool to push it against my ruler and then maybe bend it the other way and then i also have a line and then we're going to take a piece of foam or whatever we have that's soft to put underneath it could even be a piece of fabric or a towel or a book or anything like that and i'm going to take a pokey tool and then we're just going to perforate our scored line and depending on how thick your needle is you make the distance between your holes so that's what it looks like with this kind of pokey tool so I've perforated all of my lines, so now we can tear a piece off and we have all these fun tickets. Now, if we want to go one step further, we could take a hole punch, something like this, or your crocodile or whatever you have. Well, on this design, you can't really see this indent, but for example, you see it on both of these. Here we have the hole in the middle. I didn't do a great job punching. And here we have them on the sides, right? So I just went with the hole punch, with the bigger hole punch here on the outside and with the smaller hole punch there in the middle. So we could try something like that on these. So I would just go ahead and do this on the corners. Like that. So those are really fun tickets. They're blank on the back. This is really bad. So here I would just cut this. There, that's better. But for this, I took some plain white cardstock. This is a little glossy on the back. I want to try it now with some watercolor paper. I'm not sure how many grams. It is quite sturdy, so I'd say it's at least 200 grams. And you can do this with anything water soluble. I could do it with my distress oxides or distress inks, but since not everybody has those, I want to try this with my watercolors this time. And I think I'm going to start off by adding some coffee, actually. This is just some instant coffee. I'm going to just saturate this instead of just using water so that my colors will blend and automatically maybe look a little bit more vintage. I don't know, I'm trying this method for the first time. So let's see, maybe we'll add some regular water as well. I want this quite liquid. And then let's start adding some color. I have here my jar of water. So I'm gonna start with light colors. So like the yellow and the beige. And basically, I just want to put some color on here. <laughs> this is obviously like a huge mess, but that's the fun of it, I think. 
Then let's maybe add in some light orange or red. I'm just trying to get a nice variation of color here. And then maybe we can add a few accents of this blue, which of course is going to turn green because I'm adding it to yellow. I always kind of forget that blue doesn't stay blue. Trying not to make too much mud. <laughs> Anybody who's good with watercolors is probably shaking their head right now at what I'm doing. <laughs> That's okay, I'm just having fun. <laughs> we get some purple even in here, why not? Okay, let's let this dry. So maybe you saw that I was using a paper towel to soak up some of that liquid because that would have taken forever to dry. I think the effects are pretty cool. It does look quite pastel-y at the moment. So I think this is super cute, but I'm going for a little more vintage style. So I'm going to keep experimenting and I'm going to try to add some more coffee. And then I'll dry this again. We'll see what that looks like. So here it is dry. It would have looked a bit different if I would have let it air dry, but since I used my heat gun, of course, some of the coffee just blew into several directions, but actually I think it looks pretty cool. And I also dabbed some of it away again with my kitchen towel because it would have taken forever. But I think this looks very fun already. But again, I just want it to look more vintagey. So what I'm gonna try now maybe on a part of it, because I don't know if I'm going to like it. I have this Distress Stain tea dye. This is one of the daubers. I don't think they make them anymore. If you have something like this in tea, tea dye or the ink, you can try that as well, or you just keep going with watercolor until you're happy. So maybe I try that here. Gives it kind of a greenish look. That's also interesting. Not what I would have expected from the tea dye. And now the fun begins with the stamping. So use any stamps you have on hand to just kind of make random patterns. I always think what works really well is a little scripty stamp if you have something like this. If you don't, don't worry about it. Use whatever you have. So I'm gonna try to just put that in some areas. It's kind of like a background. Since I might use some of these in my nature themed journal, I'm going to work with nature themed images and I have this dragonfly, which obviously I have to use given my name. <laughs> and let's take some butterflies. I'm doing it this way because I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to be cutting several strips. I don't know yet, but you can just do it very randomly as well. On the top here, I'm going to add some bees. For some more interest, I'm going to add like some random stamps. Like this one says Berlin. We can have them overlapping. You know, you do whatever you think looks fun. And then I have some ginkgo leaves. How cute are these? These are also from the one of the Euro Creative Studio boxes from last year. I have that link down in my description box if you want to try out those boxes. I had them for quite a while and I loved them. I stopped because I had too much supplies <laughs> and not enough space. I think that is enough. You can, of course, put on as many as you like. And then we cut these into strips, whatever size you want. So this is the one with the dragonflies. And this is the one with the butterflies. And lastly, we have this one 
with the bees and actually this has a rough edge so I'm going to cut that straight as well and I think I'm going to do about every two and a half inches again use your ruler if you don't have one of these I do have one of these linked below I think as well in my description box it is a trim and scoreboard so it cuts here as well but I'm not super happy with the cutting function mostly because this here same thing on the bottom here you have the centimeters as well but it it's not very helpful in having your paper straight I don't know it just doesn't lay as well I think and the other thing that annoys me is that this thing doesn't just flip up you have to actually hold it here and push it up so that's another thing i don't really like about it but as a scoreboard it's great and since this butterfly strip is a bit wider i'm scoring at three inches because that is a little more proportional i think so then i'm going to take my one inch circle punch now if you don't have this maybe you have a cap of something that you can use instead it is a bit bitter, bigger in my case, but maybe you have something smaller. And for this one, I'm going to just do this here. Like I'm trying to center it and do a partial circle. Actually, it needs to be a half circle because, yep, otherwise it doesn't work. If you want to keep them together like this, it needs to be a half circle, which I actually I think looks kind of weird. Like a third of a circle like this looks better. And I can't. Or can I? Oh, of course I can. What am I talking about? Never mind. Forget it. So now I'm just folding it in half and punching through both. Yeah, that's fine. And then it's going to look like this. So you do that all the way through. And there you have your fun tickets. And of course, in my case, I'm going to vintage them up a bit. So here we go. Aren't they just adorable? I'm so in love with these. <laughs> and then for these smaller ones, let's do it differently. I'm going to use the same punch, but I'm going to punch the corners off. Trying to have them the same everywhere. And then for the middle pieces, I'll just again fold it. then I'll go ahead and do that for the whole strip. So that's what that looks like once it's all inked up as well. And finally for this one, let's try something else. I'm taking my hole punch and I'm going to also take the corners off with this one. Of course, this is going to give us much smaller corners. But that also looks fun. And again here, I'll just bend it and do the same thing. <laughs> so once that is inked up, that's what that looks like. Also super fun. Lastly, this is an option I've seen Martina make in one of her fabulous videos. I will link that video down below Martina from Teal and Tattered Journals and what she did is she t just took scraps of like scrapbook paper these are all Tim Holtz and this is perfect for using up your scraps and this way you don't have to mess around with paint or stamps or anything like that this is super easy so let's take one for example I'll take this one and then again all you need to do is score it and make the indents and you have your tickets so this strip happens to be about two inches wide so how wide do we want it like i'll do them three and a half long and then again you can either make the partial circles on these sides or you make them on the corners so either like we did here or like we did here. I'll do the corners. 
like this and then of course you can vintage them up again if you want so now we have all these fun ticket strips to play with i think these kind actually all of these would work really well as belly bands so you just glue it on two sides and you can decorate it up further or not or you could of course tear them apart and use them as embellishments on pockets or tuck spots or whatever I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this one because this gives me the biggest surface to work on and I'm going to do some collaging on these. I highly recommend you check out that video linked below from Martina because she embellishes hers so cute, typical, adorable, whimsical Martina style and I will try to do mine Barbara style. <laughs> and see how that goes. So I'm always keeping in mind the journal it's going in and the colors I have in there. So nothing bright. Maybe I can even somehow put in the urban element because I want as many like urban nature combined elements in this journal as possible. So I've pre-selected some elements that I think might work in a collage. And as I said, I'm trying to combine some urban elements with some nature elements so we'll see how that goes and most of these here are again from this book the extraordinary things to cut out and collage i've showed this in more detail yesterday in the video and again i will link this down below for you and another cool element i thought might be these steampunk gears i got these from debbie from her Happy Mail from the US. I will link that video for you below in case you have not seen that yet. It was absolutely fabulous. A lot of Tim Holtz supplies, mostly things that I cannot get here in Europe or they are super expensive. What is really cool about these gears is that they are super flat, even though they are metal. All the ones that I have seen so far are a lot thicker and will add so much bulk to your journal. But these are really thin and that's why they are super cool. So I think I might want to add something from that here. So as a main focal point, I want some nature themed element. One of them I want to be a butterfly. Now these two butterflies are actually from my own shop. If you are in need of butterflies, I will link that below for you as well. I have both a vintage sheet and a vibrant butterfly sheet. So I just want to decide which one. This of course comes out more here on this background. Then on one of them, so I'll do three. On one of them, let's take one of these animals from the book. We can of course also do them sideways. So I just need to decide if I'm going to use it as a strip I need to decide which way I want to use them to use it to have them all either horizontally or, or all vertically. And if I'm going to cut them apart, then it doesn't matter. Then I can do one vertically, one horizontally, and that would be fine. He is so funny. Since I don't know yet how I'm going to use this, maybe I will stick with One Direction. Is that a band name, One Direction? <laughs> if not, it should be. <laughs> So it looks super cool, actually. Yeah, maybe I'll do him. He looks super like mysterious and Halloween-y kind of. <laughs> so I wanted the gears. He would be a great candidate for a gear or more than one. And then we'll put something else, of course, underneath then I would love to add some parts of these like machinery things or you know whatever these are <laughs> it doesn't have to be the whole piece like on this one I'm just destroying this now maybe something like that and that will be cut off and then for this one how about a building skyscraper this one's more distinct i 
I love that. There's no urban element in here, but I love that. We could maybe add the gears behind him. Yep, there we go. I want to try this here. So this is a scrap. It says, when they ring the golden bells for you and me. And I like that because it has the word gold in there because the other prompt, of course, was silver or gold. Like that. I can ink that up. So here's the final result. I love how gothic this one looks. <laughs> Then we have this one here. I added some sewing thread underneath to replace the antennae. And then we have this one. I love this one so much. <laughs> and then I just added this small one here for this partial tag. <laughs> I think that's also fun. So we have four more fun elements for our journal. But given that I have so many beautiful real vintage tickets, I also want to try an option using some of these. I want to do something like a snippet roll with tickets and if you like the look of these kind of tickets but you don't have access to any vintage ones then you can check out the link below for another printable that I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some wide masking tape and now I'm going to just layer these. If you don't have masking tape then of course you just use a piece of paper and then you glue these down. The advantage of the masking tape is of course that I don't have to glue them down right now. So I'm just going to keep layering these. It's like the quickest snippet roll ever. <laughs> Now I just need to tear this off. I don't want to see it, so I'll tear it off shorter than the tickets. And this is, of course, going to be too long for my journal, but I will just have to cut it off wherever it's too long. And now we'll just decorate it again. So the tickets actually are already the urban element, I would say. But we can just add some cogwheels for the fun of it. <laughs> And then we can add some more fun animals, maybe, or not. Maybe we just stick to like mushrooms. Or maybe we don't decorate it at all and we do that once it's in the journal. That's another option. No, I think I'll go with this. That's okay. So I will just glue these down. So I've glued everything down. The glue is still drying, so you see a little bit of white still. So that's that piece, and that's this piece. And then, of course, we still need to add the gold element. I'm going to use my new Craft Emotions Metallic Gold, which smells like orange. I will link the shop from where this is below, although this is in Germany and the shop is German only. I do have another one linked as well. You don't need any of these. As I showed yesterday in the video, you can also just use watercolor or acrylics. So I'm just going to add gold all around my edges on this one. So we really made a lot today. <laughs> Let me just show you the gold accents now. I think gold just makes everything look better. Obviously, if you like silver better, you take silver. I did kind of overdo it here on the bird. <laughs> There's a little bit on the butterfly, that's fine, but this is kind of overboard, but it still looks kind of cool. And then here for the tickets, I put it all around all of the tickets. Would have been easier to do before I glued them down, but that's okay. And if you don't like any metallic colors, then just leave that element out. They are just meant for inspiration. They're not rules. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. I'm curious to see what Louisa is doing. So I will check her out next. I hope you do too. Hope to see you back here tomorrow. Love you guys.